Hey there guys, welcome back to another episode of the Buffalo Bills franchise. Today we're going to have a recap video on the Tennessee Titans, the game we played with them. Now, we lost this game 19 to 16. It was primarily a game of field goals, one touchdown scored by each team. So let's jump into the stats right away here. Let's see what went wrong. Let's see what went right during this game. Uh, the first thing I can tell you that went wrong was Josh Allen. He didn't have a great time throwing the ball today. He was definitely inaccurate for the most part. Uh, he threw for 195 yards and only one touchdown. No picks, so that's good. Uh, he was sacked three times. Uh, he threw for 57% completion rate there. Not great. Uh, 15 for 26 compared to Marcus Mariota's 21 to 28. 75% completion rate. Uh, we did sack him three times, though. Uh, the other thing that went wrong was our running game. Uh, nobody really stood out today. Devin Singletary getting the bulk of the carries there with 18 for 60 yards. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, uh, unfortunate that he couldn't pick up that third down, making his six attempts and 10 yards look really weak. And Frank Gore getting his Frank Gore carries his, with his power back for three attempts for 10 yards. Receiving, Cole Beasley led the team yet again today with five receptions, 81 yards. John Brown not getting his goal. He only had four receptions for 55 yards. Jason Kroom, two receptions for 27 yards. And Zay Jones getting the only touchdowns of the day, also with 26 yards. Our blocking yet again struggled. Uh, Ty not looking great out there against Cameron Wake. Uh, Cameron Wake basically demolished him. He put him in the dirt multiple times. So we're going to have to see what we can do at our right tackle spot. But for now, Ty might just be the best option. For our defense, Tredavious White and Tremaine Edmonds lead the team in tackles this week, uh, both with eight. Tremaine Edmonds with a half a sack, as well with Jerry Hughes with a half a sack. So they shared a sack. Harrison Phillips getting his sack of the day. And also Shaq Lawson with a sack on the day. Unfortunately, we didn't receive any turnovers, no fumbles, no interceptions from either team, mind you. So the Bills didn't give up any and neither did the Titans. And that is the play from the Bills. I want to check on Cameron Wake here. Cameron Wake. Uh, 13 tackles on the day with two sacks. Uh, defensive player of the week right here. I would vote for him. That's for sure. Uh, Ty definitely made it easy on Cameron Wake giving him that many tackles. So we'll just have to see what we can do if we can stop anybody on that side. Uh, let's go to our... Uh, Coaching opportunities here, things to do. Uh, John Brown, he's going to be frustrated. He didn't get his goal, so let's get this out of the way right here. Uh, he was said he's, he says he was open. We weren't calling his number. We tried to, but Josh Allen couldn't quite get him on point. Plus, John, plus you did have a drop there, John Brown. So it's not just on us; it's on you too. So he's going to lose some morale, which is unfortunate. Uh, let's us look at our scouting players here. I believe we were looking at wide receivers last time with our scouting points. Uh, today we're going to be looking at right tackle. Uh, immediately we don't see any stars here at right tackle. Uh, we see Demarcus Harris being the best option probably for us here at right tackle. Um, we can probably look in the offensive line draft class here to see if we can find another power player here. Um, 
Joey Weeks would probably be the best one to put over on that right tackle spot if Cody Ford doesn't work out. So let's go ahead and scout Joey Weeks. A little bit overrated. Uh, Sammy Waller is another one that we could replace Cody Ford with if Cody Ford doesn't work out. So let's go ahead and scout Sammy Waller here. A little bit overrated as well. Uh, let's go back to right tackle and scout Demarcus Harris. Oh, he's actually proved himself a little bit. And we'll do Michael Benedict as well. And he's lower rated, so that's interesting. And we might as well just do Tommy Hamlin as well from Kansas. And he's pretty good to go undrafted. Um, if Shaq Lawson doesn't work out, we're going to have to try to pick up somebody to replace him. Um, the best option we have here for run stopper here at defensive end would probably be uh, Daquan Walton from Tulane. Let's see if we can go ahead and scout him for a little bit. And so far, he has some pretty good stats. Uh, 22 years old. 6'5", 308 pounds. That's pretty good for a, a run-stopping defensive end. I wouldn't mind him being a tiny bit lighter, but sometimes those guys, like this guy right here, Dominic Bennett, he might be a guy to go for. He is 291 pounds, 6'3", run-stopping abilities. Um... We'll have to scout him definitely when we get back here to our scout board. Let's go ahead and look at players to negotiate now. Uh, LaShawn McCoy and Lorenzo Alexander, along with Frank Gore, probably not going to get a contract until this season is over to see if our to see if their uh, regression really hits that badly. Honestly, wouldn't mind bringing LaShawn McCoy back, being our third down back. I know he's not having the best season, but we could turn that around with a good offensive line. Uh, Quentin Spain, he's one of our staples on our offensive line. I wouldn't mind bringing him back. Um, two years, $14.6 million. That's about seven point three million dollars every each year. Not terrible, but I don't know. He's twenty eight years old. He's gonna start regressing here pretty soon. Only a seventy eight overall. I love his strength, but I don't know. We'll have to check on him now. Shaq Lawson. If his sack numbers don't improve, we probably will not resign him. Um, his power moves and his finesse moves are very very weak. So we're, and he's already 25. He's going to start regressing here in a few years. Um, I like his contract right now. It's not terrible, but I'm afraid to resign him because we could just pick somebody up that's better in free agency or just draft somebody to replace him. And we're probably not going to resign Stephen Auschka. He's 34 years old. He's going to regress. So let us go ahead and advance the week to the bye week. I forgot our bye week was coming up, so this is going to be a much, much needed rest. And Lorenzo Alexander has a message. He wants to know how we're going to handle the upcoming bye week. And I think the best option to go is to rest and relax. Um, just because I don't see the point of the extra prep. I like the morale boost a little bit better. So we're going to rest and relaxation for this bye week. We're not going to practice or anything. Uh, we get plus two for the entire plus two injury for the entire team, so that's good, and plus three morale for our entire team. That'll pick up the morale that we lost during that Titans game, hopefully for our players. Uh, let's go ahead and train a little bit. We're going to do medium, and we're also going to do cover to man and that's fine over there I'm going to sim these with gold medals I know a lot of people think it's cheating but I like 
training like this. It's I do this in all my other franchises. Get the gold in you know a few different ones so the different players can um, get the experience and then continue on with our lives. Uh, let us do scout college players again, and let's immediately go to that run-stopping defensive end here. He's projected to go in the fifth, and immediately we see that he has some benefits here of going earlier. He's from Ohio State. He's 23 years old, uh, plus uh, a B plus in block shedding, B plus in pursuit, and B in tackle. I wish uh, we could find out his power moves and his finesse moves right now, but hopefully that hopefully drafting gets hopefully the the whole drafting and scouting scenario gets a lot better in Madden 21. I don't mind the drafting scenario here in Madden 20, but we could definitely use an upgrade after it's been like the same thing over and over again each year. I just think you could use a little refresh because I only do franchise. I don't do ultimate team. So I'm a big franchise person. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is where we should probably look at, well, let's look at this pass coverage guy here real quick. I'm sure he won't. Um, that's sure he'll go undrafted. And yes, he will go undrafted by the predictions. Uh, let's look at corners here. We're going to have to find somebody that can be opposite of Tredavious White. Is Levi Wallace that guy? I don't know. Is Greg Stroman that guy? The guy we traded for from the Redskins for a fifth round pick? Is he that guy? I don't know. But we have Alan Whittaker here from Colorado State projected to go in the first round. Let us scout him real quick. And he is a good pick here at in the first round. Now we're going to go down to Grant Mays and we're also going to go to Philip Little. And Grant Mays a little bit overrated and Philip Little also a little bit overrated, but that's okay. Uh, it's, I, I honestly think these two would still be good picks. Um, Grant, Hay Grant Mays being the probably better pick out of the two of them. 23 years old, 22 years old. So yeah, I do believe Grant Mays would be the better pick out of the two of these defensive backs here. And the next defensive backs that would match our scheme are down here in the sixth, fifth, and seventh round. We have the actually the entire uh, low draft board here. So we're just going to blow through our scouting points here real quick and as you can see we've already got D's for Delangelo Mundy and that's not great for a player of his caliber so we're probably not going to end up drafting him <laughs> uh, let us advance let us actually upgrade our players here first before we advance the week and we have Ray Ray McLeod the third here we're going to upgrade his deep threat ability. He likes to go get that ball when it's going down the field. Uh, plus two release, plus two catch in traffic, and plus one in both awareness and deep route. That is very good on his part. We got to get that release up a little bit more and that speed up, though. Uh, Ryan Lewis, maybe a good backup, maybe not. We're going to upgrade his zone because I know his zone is not looking that great. And there's his ratings. Now we're going to advance the week here. We are going to advance all the way to the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins are two and three on the year, and the Buffalo Bills are three and two. So we will be taking on Miami in our next episode. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode of the Buffalo Bills franchise and I hope to see you again soon. Uh, stay safe out there and be kind to one another.